into week three here in this message in the church series, and I have loved it. I have. I have loved it. I never preached this specifically about who we are called to be as the church. Week one was I love the church, just a message simply titled, I love the church. And then last week it was build his church. Come on, and I believe we're called to that. We're called to build his church. We're not building our church. And candidly, at the end of it, unless the Lord builds the house, those that labor, labor in vain. Text said it in his prayer. It is God who is building the house. And this morning, I want to bring a word just simply titled church where you belong. Because this is that place. This is that place. And I love it. I love the, the little cliche that we use that we say that you belong. Or even often in churches, you'll see it written. Maybe it's on the Connections Hub or something like that. And it'll say, you belong here. And we, we love that. Uh, but I think you will see it lots of other places too. Like we belong or you belong. I want to qualify the phrase simply by saying church is where you belong. And, and maybe you're in this house this morning and you haven't yet decided to follow Jesus. And so that seems less specifically true for you. But here's my dilemma in this communication. I still believe it's true for you too because I believe you were made for a relationship with God and you're meant to live as a son or a daughter. And as sons and daughters, this is where we belong. The church. The church is where we belong. Now, when we think about the church, we think about some of those things that we find in the house of the Lord, as it were. Like, for instance, we find we find help right in the house of the Lord. And that's certainly a place you belong in this place. This is a place to find some help. And I don't just mean this local rendition. I am talking about the church, but it isn't just a place for help. The church is also a place for healing. Maybe there's some things in your heart and your life and and I'm not saying that we can't find some assistance in other sources, but I'm going to say church is where you belong. This is the place where the king of creation can do big work in your hurt and bring healing. And the family of faith is meant to step up and, and be a part of that, that journey for you. And it's, it's not easy uh, and it is not always what it should be, but it is where you belong. And for community, this is a place you belong for community. Do you have friends outside of the church? Of course you do. Do you have community? Hopefully in your neighborhood. We are meant to have a sphere of influence. That isn't just our Christian friends in church. Come on, get together outside the church and be the church. Can I get a witness on that? But this is a place for community. Your best friends should be uh, found in rela relationship with those who have relationship with Jesus. Okay, I'm going to say a lot of things this morning that are going to make you a little uncomfortable. And just bet money that if it makes you uncomfortable, it's making me a little bit uncomfortable. But I'm going to say it anyway because it's so. It is the place we come on now. Church is where you belong because it's a place where you find calling. A lot of the things that are in you that are meant to be called out of you will happen in the community. It's where, where God calls things out of you. You didn't even know that was in there. Someone walked up to me this morning before church and said, I had the craziest week. She said, I talked to somebody about Jesus. That's, that's my kind of crazy. All right. And that's, I mean, that's just something that God's doing. He does that. He starts to bring things out of us, call things out of us. We didn't even know. We're in there, and ultimately it's a place where we are meant to be, as the church, about the Father's business. We are not about our business. We are about His business, right? Come on, and we've loved that from the beginning of 828 Church, that our, we are called to be a family, and our family has a family business. Come on. We do. And it is His business. The things that matter to God should matter to us. Now, kind of a theme verse for this series has been Ephesians 2 and verse 19, which says, You are no longer strangers and foreigners or aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And when you think about the church, I said last week we're building His house. It's a household, though. It isn't just a building. My gracious, I joked about how there are churches that meet under a tree, and they're some of the most powerful and impactful churches I've been to in 2023, were some of those churches that were meeting under an open sky or under a tree or in a mud uh, and thatch building. There are churches that meet in standalone facilities, and there, there are Church happens in homes, even here at 828 Church, when life group happens throughout the week, right? And then we know some churches meet in a shopping center. It's not, it's not the house, it's the household of God. But I will say to you that if you are a part of a 
community or a family, it's good if you hang out together, right? To be in the house. The household needs to hang out in the house. And here's what I find with all of this in this introduction. Agreement is not so much a problem. It's, it's easy. Agreement is easy. It is participation that's problematic. I don't have a problem giving people to agree that we, we belong in church if you're a Christ follower. Christ followers believe that. But, but participating deeply in the church is, is problematic, if I'm honest. And so this morning, I'm not even so that the God goal here is to get you to go all in on church. Not, not again. Y'all think this again seems self-serving. And, and on some level it is because I would love it if you were here and here consistently and faithfully. And many of you are. I'm per, in some ways I'm preaching to the choir this morning. But understand what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about what happened if we go all in with God on the church. And, and again, I say it consistently here. We're not to check the church off the list people. I'm going to push you to participate, to be, not just go to church. Now I would love that. I would love it if people would more consistently go to church. I just think that it would be ridiculous for me to preach about that. That's a low bar. Let's go all in and be the church. Participate on any level as a part or on every level as a part of the church. Because people will say, well, yeah, but I'm a part of the big C church. And then believe that it's okay to skip connection to a local community. And that doesn't even make sense. So it's great to say I'm a part of the big C church. It's a little bit like, though, if someone came to me and said, yeah, I play, I play, I'm like, I play professional basketball. I'm an NBA player. My first question will be, which team are you on? Right? You don't get to bounce a ball in the driveway and say that you're a professional ball player. I don't care if your mama does give you a buck. <laughs> or somebody will say, I'm in the choir. But they just sing along in their car. And the choir doesn't even know. <laughs> well, come on, that's how some of us have approached church. Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> Stand alongside. And sing. I know some of you in this local rendition, you've been checking this out. And we probably a little hard to figure out. You're like, I still don't know for sure if I like y'all. <laughs> Find somewhere. Find somewhere. I release you. If this isn't going to be the place that you go all in, get somewhere and go all in with God. That's how much I believe in this. I don't want you to just come here and check church off the list. I'm saying that God has called us to be the church. A and Paul wrote about this to the Corinthians, and he wrote a lot of really helpful instruction to the Corinthians. In fact, he wrote two letters, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and he used this analogy. He said it's like he was trying to get them to understand that they belong together in the church. And he said this, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Now that certainly applies to the Big C Church, but it also applies to this local rendition of it. All right, it, it, it is a replicated model. He said some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. And so the, the pushback, he was addressing the pushback that we often get for real engagement and involvement in the church. And that's that, well, I don't really fit. So we'll come and we'll think, but it's, it's not, I like it, but it's not exactly my church. And so we'll stand a little bit on the margins, right, on the edge, and, and we think, well, I can't quite, and... And this looks differently for everyone. I get that. I, look, I get that complete and total engagement in God's church looks differently. So I can't judge that for you, but you can. The Holy Spirit can help you to know if you're really in. And if you're holding back because you don't fit, because we're not all the same, that's a, that is a poor pushback. He said in this passage, he said, we are, we are Jews and we are Gentiles and we are slaves we are free. We're all those things, but we're one body. We didn't stop being those things that were different. Karen and I are so different. I, I actually, I could, I don't know if I should. See, see, <laughs> my skin tans. I love you. I love her skin. I love her skin tone. 
We are also very different personality-wise. She has said every time we do pre-marriage or marriage counseling, she says, uh, we are like hand and glove. <laughs> we are not the same. No one in our family, really. Me and Jake look a little bit alike. Sorry, son. But we, we're, we're family. We don't have to look the same to be one family. It's ridiculous. I'm an old, bald, white dude. No beef against all you other old, bald, white dudes, but I'm so thankful that we don't have a church of old, bald, white dudes. That's not my preference. Diversity is a beautiful thing, and it's the heart of God. And it is so much more than skin tone or hairstyle or color. It is age and demographic and different cars and different bank accounts. It's family. It's what we're called to. They put it in the Bible. What brings us together is God and His truth. That's non-negotiable. So we are identified as sons and daughters who believe and live God's word and truth. And that's where we're the same. We don't get to adjust on that. We're not diverse outside of this. This is what makes us the same. Our belief in His Word about who He made us to be and how He called us to live. Do we have some work to do? Sure we do. I heard a quote from Torn Wells yesterday. He said, "Don't, because what, what we'll say in this is we'll say, well, we need to go for it. And then when it isn't going well, we get frustrated. But he said, don't just go for it. you got to grow for it. And that's where the church has lost it. Everybody loves the idea of being together as a family and even being in, uh, diverse in the way that we look. And people don't want to go to a church that's just old people, right? And without old people, church go broke, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say until I say it. I mean, it's just kind of happening. It's live, everybody. It's live television, uh, right? But, but we have to work on it. He said, don't just go for it. you got to grow for it. And I know that that's true on every level of what it looks like for us to be together as a church. Here's what I know. God is big enough to make us great together. I know that. I know that. I know God is. And, and we're, not get, we're not better together without God. Don't even joke yourself about it. We're not. We're not better together without God. We might as well just clump up in little pockets of homogeny with people who are the same as us. But we don't have to do that that way because God is with us and he will help us be who he made us to be, which is beautiful and complete. And without each other, we always suffer lack. I'm preaching whether y'all know it or not. <laughs> Here's a a big takeaway for us this morning, we belong together. That's why the enemy has worked so hard to push and keep us apart. That's why. He knows. He knows. We belong together. And he has, from the beginning, tried to separate us over whatever he could find. He tries to separate marriages. He tries to separate homes. He tries to separate destinies and diversity. He's in all of it. All of it. He tries to separate moms from dads. And he tries to separate parents from kids because he knows together we're going to be good. And he's trying to separate us. Our enemy's goal, though, isn't the separation. It's isolation and, des and to destroy us. That's what his goal is. Separation is just a part of the plan. But the goal is to destroy you. And that's what he can do if he can get you separated uh, in one of my very first trips to Southern Africa, and at this point, many, many, many trips to Southern Africa and lots of opportunities to go see wildlife. And I love it when you're rolling around and you're seeing wildlife. And one thing you note is that you rarely ever see one of the animals who would qualify as prey alone. I do remember once, though, there was this wildebeest, right? And he was, he was just standing there. And I mean, I watched this thing for a minute and it didn't move. Like it was a statue. And I was like, what happened to that guy? Was he just standing there eating grass? And then everybody left? And he didn't know it? <laughs> and he was like... I mean, he knew. Because if you see a lone wildebeest, that's hashtag line bait. Right? And our enemies, he moves around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. I don't know if that will to be probably still standing there. He was just hoping everybody would come back. <laughs> I, I am alone. 
Uh, another takeaway for us is this. Our enemy wants to divide and conquer so he can deceive and destroy. That's the takeaway from that bit of teaching. There was another time when Karen was with me. And we were in this area where we were seeing some wildlife. And, and we came along and there was this little group of uh, zebras or for Christie zebras. And they were standing there. and they, But there was one zebra that was just laying down. It was kind of flicking its tail occasionally and moving its head. And there was another zebra. We'll call him Zebra Buddy. And he was standing next to that one zebra. He was just standing there next to him. Like you no know, others were doing stuff, but this one was standing there, keeping his eyes open. And I had made the comment as we were driving by, I said, it looked like that zebra was stomping his foot at the zebra that was lying down. Like, hey, you need to get up. <laughs> and then we came around just a minor curve, and there was a lioness sitting there. And I was like, he was stomping his foot. <laughs> zebra buddy. I know you didn't anticipate hearing this this morning, but everybody needs a zebra buddy. <laughs> you know, you, you need, come on from my Air Force, you need somebody on your six. I mean, you need somebody, we need people. That's, we are called, I said it already, I'll say it again, uh, together. We're called to be together. But together is not only where you're safer, it's also where we're better, we're more complete, we're stronger. He went on to say in verse 14, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, I mean, this is so intuitive. Would that make it less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Uh, not very well. You can't see what you're hearing, right? <laughs> what? I love Paul. He's so good. Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? <laughs> Hear what I'm smelling? I mean, <laughs> okay. Try that with your kids. They'll think you're, your grandkids, they'll think you're weird. I know because I've done it. But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. Oh, my goodness, that's so good. Here you are. Now, this is a local rendition of what I'm talking about. This is just a small representation of it. But does it matter? Yes. Yes, because God has put each part right where he wants it. And if he puts you here, come on. He's counting on you and so are we. Because we are one body. How strange would it be if the body only had one part? You're many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can never say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest are least or and least important are actually the most necessary. Another takeaway for us is this. It takes all of us together to be who God made us to be. It does. It takes all of us. I think that should be today's big takeaway, actually. But it, it's simple, but it's completely true. You know, like, remember the hokey pokey? Yeah, this is, this is happening. This is happening. Remember, you put your left foot in, you put your left foot out. But by the way, leave it in. Put your left foot in, you shake it all about. I don't even know how to shake it. <laughs> you do the hokey pokey. And you... But then they get to this one part. You put your whole self in. You put your whole self out. Let's just put our whole self in. Uh, 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 this is this. Yes, individually, this applies. But I'm actually teaching about the church right now. Yeah, I'm talking to you online and south. We're one church. Come on, put you put your whole self in. That means every hand and every heart. If this is your church. I said it. If this is your church, come on. So we as a church. Can do the Holy Ghost hokey pokey. Anybody want to do the Holy Ghost hokey pokey? <laughs> I do. I do. But to do that, I can't decide for us autonomously. I can challenge us. Because I'm a part of the body and I, I am not just the mouth. Thank you very much. But I'm certainly that. But yesterday at Miracle League, I was hands and feet. Mm -hmm. I was running bases and clapping, so were many of you. And, and many weeks at Miracle League, I'm the only 828er out there, although rarely ever with Robert and Chantel, because they is always there. But yesterday we had a great contingent. It was awesome. It doesn't matter. I'm repping this church every time I go. Right? Hands and hearts and feet. 
the hands, our just willingness to serve is incredible because our hands speak by how they serve. Our feet carry the gospel to so many points and places. Our team that's getting ready to go to the DR, they're, they're, they're the hands and feet of this house and of the church, and we get to be a part of that. In fact, another takeaway for us is this. Serving is sign language for the lost who can't yet hear or see God. It's when we use our hands and our hearts and our feet for him that my words would just bounce off. But when we extend our voice as a church with our hands, it's like sign language. And it says God hasn't forgotten you and God cares about you and God loves you. It's the body. It's the body. Together. The, the father's business suffers loss when his sons and daughters don't work together. And here's the thing, too. Another quick hitter takeaway. We can't pull off together unless we are faithful to gather. So we don't like that very much, though. I mean, some of us do. Some of you here, every time you're not out of town, you're here. And I appreciate that. And I'm not, I don't have time to judge you or figure out your schedule. So don't worry about it. This isn't me personally criticizing anyone. I just know that statistically Pew Research says that most faithful regular church attenders come two out of five Sundays. And that is not enough gathering for being together in all that God has called us to do. It's not. And if that's true for you, your kids are probably in church six to eight times a year. Think about that. That's a problem. To be together, we have to be faithful to gather. That should have been the easiest thing I taught today because that should be the low bar for God's followers right there. It's easy. I think the thing, though, is that it's easy to get so focused on self and what's happening in our lives that we actually only go to church when we need church. And what we're missing in that is that you're needed by the church. That's what we're missing. And, and honestly, that's a big miss, not just for the church, but for you. Because if you live in a space where you only go to church when you think you need church, you're missing on the fact that you're needed, and that's a lot to miss on. That, that, that's really not good for your heart. Like you're missing on this sense of purpose and importance. And that will leave your life feeling empty and broken. And you'll be looking for something that you could find if you found the fact that you are needed to. That you are important to. That you are called to purpose to. What if we treated our calling to follow Christ the way we treated our job? What would happen if you showed up at your job two out of five days? You better be the boss. I'm going to move on if it's okay with everyone. <laughs> Whew, help us, Lord. Here's what Paul wrote in Hebrews. He said, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. That's what he said. CJ is going to join me on the stage and I'm going to try to land this. Here's another takeaway for us, one of the last two. You don't need to just think of your needs. You also need to know that you're needed. <sighs> I didn't say you don't need to think about your needs. I didn't say that. We all have needs and are at times needy, and that's one of the reasons you belong here is because we're here for it, everybody. I have been supported and loved in times of tremendous need. But we don't need to just think of our needs. We literally need. There is a need inside of us to know that we're needed. You belong. Maybe you'd say this morning, but I've, I've been struggling. I mean, my walk with God. I'm, I'm primarily in this moment speaking to Christ's followers, but you might say I've been struggling or I don't have any God history, at least not good History or my history even with the church has been hurtful. And I get it. And that could be very accurate and true. I certainly wouldn't question. But here's what I would say about that. But Jesus, 
See, here's the thing. I get it. You, maybe you don't have any history or maybe you've been struggling lately in your walk with him. Well, do you still belong here? This is still where you belong. You belong. Because it's his church and he said so. Well, I've been hurt. Well, it's still his church and he said so. People hurt people. Church don't hurt people. Jesus don't hurt people. That's not Jesus. He doesn't carry on that way. That's just some flesh and blood like you and me somehow gone astray. You still belong in church. You still belong. There was a a young man years ago who came to Jesus in our student ministry at Louisiana Tech. And I mean, the, the opportunity to walk with him into a relationship with Jesus when he had no history. He had suffered suffered just an unmitigated tragedy in his fraternity. One of his fraternity buddies had been shot right before graduation and lost his life. It was just a crazy story. He stayed completely drunk for six weeks, but because of some students who had found Jesus from a completely broken place, he too was led to a place of considering Christ and I got to walk with him in that journey and he gave his heart to Jesus but it was funny he told me so you know when they when they were first inviting me over because the fraternity house was across the street from our ministry center he said I was I was afraid I would break somebody he said I was I felt like if I go there I'm gonna break somebody like a bull in a china shop maybe somebody in this house believes that too it's not true And in fact, if we are who we need to be with Christ, we will be so soft that you couldn't break us even if you tried. Only brittle people break. But if we'll keep our hearts soft before him, the kind of clay that he likes to work with, we'll be fine. Here's what Isaiah said in Isaiah 43, 1. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are not your own, Paul wrote again to the Corinthians in this time, 1 Corinthians 6. He said, for you were bought with the price. I'll say it again. Come on, worship team, join me here in that South. It's his church, his family. He paid for it. And he says, you belong. Again, the last takeaway, it's his church, bought and built by him, and he created a custom fit place in it just for you. Don't just come to church. Go all in and be the church together, beautifully built by God. This morning's poem is titled, You Belong. You belong, and don't you forget it. We were made for together. God did it. Not apart. That was never the plan. That's the work of the enemy's hand. To divide, deceive, and destroy, to use hurt and hate, that's his ploy. He hopes we'll just stay away without passion. We all fade to gray. But when God's love is found in a few, it will draw men together and hold them like glue. The church, it's God's way to restore. We're we're together. We add up to more. Each with the life that we bring, one family, one kingdom, one king. Church, it's where you belong. Maybe this morning here at our south location, you're going through something. Heavy heart, big burden, maybe a conviction or a calling. Well, why don't we pray about it? Why don't we work together to let God work? Come on, let me say that again. Why don't we work together to let God work and see what God wants to do Today, today, in his church.